How are you all today? Good, good. I put some videos up this week um, about this very sermon. Uh, that beautiful pottery there is a part of a Japanese art and pottery art called Kintsugi. And I'm going to be sp- preaching about that because it's long been something that I've wanted to, to do myself, but it's hard to get into. It's a lot of stuff that goes into it, but it's something that I've been wanting to do for a long time because I think the art is beautiful, but it speaks to me on a spiritual level uh, in a different way. So today, I'm going to be talking about kintsugi and God. Now, kintsugi is the Japanese art of repairing broken pottery using lacquer and later a gold powder to not only put the broken pieces back together, but to also add a new dimension of beauty and value to the original piece by highlighting the once broken pieces as the new golden pieces. So this image up here we have on the wall, you could see where there were cracks and chips and that fell and broke apart. And that art form, they just put it back together with lacquer and then make it more beautiful by layering over that lacquer with gold. This art form speaks to me because I truly believe this is what a relationship with God is like for our lives. That's what this sermon is all about. So the start of this sermon must also be the start of kintsugi, brokenness. Something must be broken first. Kintsugi is about broken pieces. It's the art of repairing the broken works of another potter. As humans, we try to craft a life for ourselves by taking control of the decisions and choices in our life to make something of ourselves or for ourselves. We act as though we are the potter. We endlessly chase after careers, money, family, friends, happiness, gratification, comfort. Whatever it is, we all start chasing something. We're all looking for something to complete us. However, we need to get there, we do it. Whatever we need to do to make it happen, we do it. It's our plan and we stick to it. And some of us even find success in that very path. In other words, some of us have made it. We found the pot of gold at the end of our rainbow. We built by our own hands the life we thought we wanted. Some of us, if not most of us, never reached that. And thus we stay in a perpetual state of dissatisfaction. Eventually factors out of our control for both those of us who never made it and those who did, eventually factors out of your control knock you off your shelf. Financial hardship, physical health problems, mental health problems, guilt, worthlessness, self-hatred, bitterness, loss, emptiness, hopelessness. Without fail, life will always find a way to leave you broken. No matter how high the shelf you put yourself on, it will find a way to knock you off of it. It starts sometimes by it being little cracks along the way, and sometimes it takes years and years for you to finally break Some of this pottery started off as little chips and it just kept breaking over and over again, little by little, until it became unusable. Or some of this pottery was damaged in an instant during an earthquake or during a kid dropping the bowl or something, an instant damaging change occurs in our life and it's left you in dust. And in the dust are the pieces of yourself that lay there broken, just like that pottery. Just like the broken pottery of Kintsugi, the valuation of others becomes that you are now worthless. You cannot serve your purpose any longer. And they say to you, you must be swept away. You are now made trash. You no longer hold value. But to the eyes of the right craftsman, you can be saved. Not only can he fix you, but he can make you better than you were before. And that brings me to the next part of the story. The repair. In Luke 15, 10, the Bible says, In the same way I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The craftsman is excited by your arrival, for he knows the wonders he can make with you. He sees exactly how to fix you. He has all the right tools for the job, and so he begins his work in you. With careful planning and gentle yet firm hands, he puts the broken pieces back together with his lacquer. Suddenly, you're taking shape again. You can feel yourself coming back, 
all the negativity of being broken is being cleansed from you little by little. The brokenness has been forgiven, but much like the brokenness in Kintsugi, it is not hidden. You feel relieved to have been made whole again, but the craftsman isn't done yet. He isn't just fixing you, he's elevating you, giving you new dimensions and new levels of beauty. With his gold, he begins to cover your scars and makes them bright and beautiful. You aren't the same as you once were. His goal was to never put you back together and give you the life you created. It was to give you the life he created for you. You are now more beautiful, more valuable. And because of the craftsman and his tools, you're stronger than you've ever been. The scars that once brought you shame are now his glory. Because you came to the craftsman, you serve a new purpose. You are a new creation. Those around you don't see the past as ugly anymore. They see the beauty in your repair and the glory of the craftsman's work. This is the story of us. We are merely works of God. Once broken pieces, cast aside, now made beautiful. We are living testimonies of his glory. There are so many elements of us that is like broken pottery. And there are so many elements of God that is like the Kintsugi artist putting us back together. We can be made beautiful again, but we must allow ourselves to be worked on. We must allow ourselves to have a new purpose, to be made new, to be made whole. And we also, a hard one for Christians, must allow our scars to shine brightest of all of the things about us. I think as Christians, we could do a better job showing the world that we're a lot like them. We just found Jesus. We could do a better job at showing them we're not perfect. We could do a better job at showing them, hey, you can do this too. I wasn't special when I got saved. I was just like you, just a normal person. And guess what? I still am. I just got something magnificent in me. We can look because the reality is whether they know it or not, the rest of society until they come to the craftsmen are all broken pottery like we once were. We should go back to those people. We should go back to those other pieces of broken pottery and say, hey, there's something that can fix you. I found something over here that can make you better. And all you got to do is let him work in you. There's a lot of lessons in the story of Kintsugi, and that teaches us about our relationship with God, us, the broken pottery, and God, the craftsman. So I want to go over those. This sermon is going to be rather quick because I think it's simple enough for us to understand that we are broken pottery and the potter is doing work in us. So the first lesson in this sermon is to the world, your value is fragile and ever-changing. One moment can change everything. It doesn't matter what you've built. It doesn't matter your legacy. It could be stripped and pulled from under you. Many people in this church here today are good people with good lives, but there are people who have lived better lives and have had better bank accounts, better impacts on the world, globally more known, and their rug has been pulled out from under them. It happens to bigger people all the time. We're not immune from that. Society will pull the rug from under you, sometimes rightfully so, and other times it's just an attack on you. One moment would change your value. The world doesn't care about the context of how you became broken. They just see you as broken. They close the doors and lessen your value. You know, to some people, the broken pottery on the ground, they don't see how it became broken. They just see that it's broken and they start sifting it away and sweeping it into the dustpan and putting it to the side. But that's not faith. That's not God. God sees the context of how you became broken. God sees how you got where you are. He empathizes. He sees you with sympathy. He knows that you were not made perfect, that Christ is perfect, and if you would just come to him, he can fix you. But while you haven't, you're gonna be broken. And there's a heartache in that for him. To God, no matter how broken you are, you still have value. 
He looks at that broken pottery and he doesn't see something that needs to be swept up. He sees something that needs to be built up. You are never counted out by God. There are never too many broken pieces that need to be put back together. God can take dust and make man. Imagine what he could do with your broken life. God sees you as your full potential, even when you are just pieces. The second lesson, the more broken you are, the better. You might think you're too broken, too far gone, but to God, that's even better. Now, I haven't started working in this craft as I hope to someday, but I'd like to imagine that when they get broken pieces of pottery, if it's broken in two, they're a little excited. But when it's broken in pieces of tin, they get real excited because they get to play around a little bit more. This bowl gets to look a little bit more like they did something in it. This bowl was a bunch of broken pieces. And I bet you that artist was very happy with that. When you come to God with so many broken pieces, he's saying to himself, there are so many chances for my glory to shine in this one. I got a lot of gold I can put in this pottery. He loves taking us simple, broken people and using us. The more broken the piece, the more visible the repair, the more beautiful the story of the pottery. Don't be ashamed of your past. Don't be ashamed of how broken you are. That becomes a more beautiful story. The harder it was for you to put your life back together, the better it is because the more glory you shine for God. Be proud to have been broken. Be proud that you were needing to be repaired because now you get to wear more gold. And I don't know, I didn't put the exact prices in this and I'm just gonna go off on a tangent that's not in my notes. I looked at buying a piece of kintsugi to bring here and pass around. It's quite expensive. The bowls that were $20 that fell apart and broke become $110. You can't find them for very cheap. You might find them for 70 bucks but they're done by an amateur and there's not much gold lacquer on them. That is us. We come with a valuation that we gave ourselves and God is saying to you, if you just let me work on you, I've got so much more value that I could put in you. The third lesson. In Kintsugi, the lacquer that's used makes the original pottery more durable. It becomes water resistant and more heat resistant. After you let God save you, the same thing happens in you. You become stronger. Your peace becomes harder to disturb. And your value is now consistently resistant to change. The world doesn't get to evaluate you anymore. The craftsman has already determined your price. The fourth lesson, there is beauty in the past and your brokenness. Without being broken, these pieces of pottery would never get the elevation of kintsugi. And without you being broken, you would never get the elevation of God working in your life, of miracles happening. If you did not have dire circumstances in your life, you wouldn't know what a miracle felt like. If you never had to fall to your knees in prayer and beg God to make a move and just cry your eyes out hoping for a move, you would never know how good it feels when God shows up. If you never felt heartache, if you never felt like you were stuck in war with life, you would never know what true peace felt like. Never, ever be ashamed of your past. Without your past, <coughs> you wouldn't know what it's like for God's repair to be in you. He made you new. That is such a beautiful thing. Be proud of that. So what? You lost the life you put together. What God is doing is so much better. What God is doing in you is so much more beautiful. It holds so much more value. And it is so much better for you because it makes you more durable, more valuable, stronger, more resistant. And ultimately, it allows others to be saved. The life you built shows people how good you are. And that doesn't do anything for them. But the life God builds in you shows them how good he is through you. And that saves people. I wear my gold with pride because I hope wearing it with pride shows people that they need that gold too. And maybe they come to the Father if they see how it looks when he gets to work in you. The fifth lesson, 
The gold shows that this piece has been worked on by a master craftsman. Somebody who knows how to take damage and heal it. Somebody who knows how to think, take things others can't figure out and put it back together. If this pot right here, this piece of pottery came to us and it was broken pieces and they said, put it back together, we would have no clue what we're doing. That pottery there that is on this picture, it shows that somebody had immense knowledge and capability. When you show up and show people that God has repaired you, they look at your life in amazement. How did God put those pieces back together? How did God make that out of them? How did God heal them? How did God change the doctor's report? How did God put the, the money in the bank that they needed? How did God change their life? And it shows them that there has to be something bigger and better than the science that's out there. There has to be something bigger and better than self-help. It has to be something like a master craftsman out in the world world who's able to see things I can't see. Your gold shows you've been worked on by the Father. Gosh, you need to be proud of that. Sixth, each fixed piece is a standing advertisement for what the craftsman can do. The bigger the damage, the more impressive it is to the others that are looking at it. And the more they want to have their selves worked on by the craftsman. You know, I'd imagine this piece is in someone's dining room and their friends come over and look at it and say what's that that's beautiful and they have the the four piece set and there's three other pieces that are just black sitting in there and they go what's that gold one and they say well I broke this pottery and I sent it to this craftsman and he fixed it and now it looks like this and I'd like to imagine that some people some of the wives and husbands go home and look in their pantry and think is there anything broken I can send to this guy is there anything I can break to send to this guy? Husbands go into the kitchen and slam and break pottery and bring it. Hey, this accidentally broke. Can you fix it? That's what people will do when they see the beauty of God at work in you. They'll say to themselves, well, if God can do that for them, I have things I need to be fixed. I've got something broken in my cabinet. I've got some chips and breaks and scars in my life that God can heal. God can make me that beautiful. God can do something for me. You are a standing advertisement for the master craftsman that is the father, that is is God. Walk around and show people how beautiful it is. And guess what? The people who already know the craftsman don't need the message. It's the people who don't know that he's there that need the message. You got to get out and show your beauty. You got to get out and show your gold. You got to get out and show God's glory to the people who need it most. And those are the unsaved. Put yourselves not on a shelf of your own glory, but walk around and show people what God has done for you. Somebody will come to the Father through that. I'm going to close with this thought. This is such a great metaphor for God because when people see God at work in your life, it shows them that God can do something for them too. The friends, the people around you, they likely don't think that you're better than them. They probably see you as a, a friend, a compatriot, a co-worker, an equal, and they say to themselves, man, God healed Larry. I got a doctor's report that I'm terrified of. I got some labs that had been done, and I just hope the results are good. And that might be the way they go to their first prayer. That might be the way they come to God. It might be as simple as you existing around them, showing them how beautiful it is when there's a craftsman at work in their life. We are so beautiful when God works through us. You know, sadly, a lot of the world still sees themselves as broken pieces. A lot of the, of the world sees themselves as just dust that needs to be swept away. It leads to things like depression, suicide, mental health issues. It leads to very damaging, heartbreaking things that change lives for the worst. It should be our job, before they start to evaluate themselves as worthless, while everyone around them is looking at the pile of dust on the floor and saying it holds no value, we need to find them, show up right there and say, no, this piece is about to have way more value than it ever did. You need to find the people in your life who haven't been saved. And while they're looking around, attaching negative labels to themselves, hurtful titles, while they're being attacked, 
while they're being pressed against, while they're being waged war against, you should stand there, a once broken piece of pottery, now made new, not only showing them that there's an option, but showing the world that this piece matters. That should be what we do for people. 